Hi there, everybody. Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. One of the most common critiques of other martial arts that I see is people will say something along the lines of people don't fight like that or fights don't happen like that or that wouldn't work. Um, whereas there are some very genuine places in which that critique can be made, for example, like no touch knockouts or the idea of, you know, someone's going to come at you and they're going to push like this and you're going to like magically move them around or something like that. Th those, those obviously don't work. However, there is a lot of criticism of martial arts methods that work quite well, but people don't understand what they're looking at. And this is where we get into the main core of this video, which is the difference between a training method and a fighting method. So many people, when they look at a martial artist practicing, they assume every movement they are making is solely for the purpose of applying an actual combat as opposed to understanding the truth that the vast majority of things we do as martial artists are designed to prepare our body for combat or to prepare certain reflexes for combat. And every single martial art has these training methods and has these fighting methods. For example, in Wing Chun, a lot of people will see folks working the wooden dummy and they have no idea what the hell they're looking at. And so they'll see us take our arms in this fashion or move our body in this sort of way and they'll say, well, nobody really fights like that. Well, a good Wing Chun practitioner knows nobody fights like that. This is not intended to be a one-for-one -one representation of how you fight. This is what we call a training method. Same thing goes with a lot of martial arts, that sometimes they'll have really low and deep stances. And people, once again, will look at that and say, well, no one fights with their legs that low. God, I hope not. But that is also a training method. Now, you may sit there and say, well, <laughs> you know, my martial art doesn't have those training methods. I bet you do, but you don't know that you have those training methods, or rather you don't recognize you're doing the same thing. So let me take one of the most widely respected martial arts in the entire world, boxing as an example. So we know that there are the basics of boxing, right? We have your jab, your cross, your hook, and these are kind of examples of fighting methods that you are intended to throw a jab, a cross, a hook. You are intended to throw these moves in actual combat. However, every boxer worth their salt has spent a certain amount of time on the speed bag. If you ever watch the things we do on the speed bag, that's not the way we actually fight. It looks nothing like the way we fight, actually. Many times we hit with the bottom of the fist into a back fist. We don't sit on the speed bag working jabs and crosses. We are working a very different set of tools on the speed bag. Now, why are we doing that? Well, the speed bag itself is developing quick twitch reflexes. It's also really helping us keep our cardio up. It is a training method. How about skipping rope? That's another example of something that every good boxer should be doing on the regular. That when you're jumping rope, we aren't saying that your footwork should be just doing this, right? And you shouldn't have your hands out like this. But what this is doing is it's conditioning your body to the activity for boxing. That's a training method. And so when you see someone working a wooden dummy, they are not exclusively training fighting abilities. Most of what they're doing is a training method. They're teaching themselves to fire straight line punches through um, basically immovable objects. So the idea is like if someone blocks a punch, we want to actually have a better structure than theirs. And these hard wooden limbs really force you to have good structure because if you don't have good structure, you hurt yourself <laughs> on the dummy. Um, same thing goes with the low stances, that it's not necessarily meant to, uh, that you fight from a low stance. The really low stance oftentimes is just meant as a way to condition your legs so that when you're in a normal stance, uh, your legs don't get tired. Another martial art that does this is Muay Thai. You'll sometimes see Muay Thai fighters and they'll train with their hands way high up like this. Um, and that's not actually how they fight. When you watch Muay Thai in a ring, their hands are suddenly down here where they're supposed to be. Well, why do they train with their hands up here then? That's not the way they fight. It's because it's a training method. Their hands are being held high so that they can build the endurance to keep their hands up. Because if you've ever boxed, kickboxed, done Muay Thai, you'll see that your hands are supposed to be up. But by like the third or fourth round, you're tired and your hands start dropping. Well, if you're used to your hands being way up here, this suddenly becomes a resting position. This is all 
an example of training methods versus fighting methods. So where do some of the traditional martial arts go wrong? How come these training methods fail people sometimes? Well, the truth is, it's because the art becomes entirely about the training method and not about the fighting method at all. So for example, Wing Chun, I can go back to that. In my school, I really focus on making sure that people can apply their Wing Chun in an actual fight. So we do a lot of sparring, we do a lot of pad work, we do a lot of drills that are intended to impart the fighting method of Wing Chun. However, I've seen many Wing Chun practitioners who their only focus is the training method. They want to get really, really good at the forms, they want to get really, really good at Chi Sao, and that's it. They just want to do forms and they want to do Chi Sao. Whereas neither of these things are fighting methods, they are training methods. They are tools designed to improve their fighting ability, but they are not going to create your fighting ability. Your actual fighting ability comes from doing drills and from sparring. If you could picture how effective a boxer would be if they only worked the speed bag and they only skipped rope, well, they would never get good at boxing at all, would they? However, skipping rope and working the speed bag help improve their fighting ability. That's why it's a training method and not a fighting method. For one reason or another, there are some martial arts that have kind of a divide in the knowledge base, that you have people who understand how to apply the art in actual combat, and then you have people who only understand the training methods, and that's what they teach. And this effectively creates two schools of the same art, one that's very effective and one that's really not effective at all. Both sides think that they're doing the right thing. These aren't evil shysters pulling the wool over people's, people's eyes, but what we are going to see is that you're gonna have people who focus on exclusively the training method and they're gonna look really good, but they probably can't actually fight. And then you're gonna have the people who utilize the training methods to enhance the fighting method, and they actually also teach the fighting method itself, and those people are gonna be able to fight. So I hope this clears up maybe some misunderstandings people have about the various martial arts within our world. And when you're looking at an art, try not to just judge it by what you see, because you may not be seeing them practicing their fighting method, you may actually just be watching them train. If you're interested in studying self-defense or even Wing Chun here at my school in Indianapolis, all the information to do so is in the description box down below. We also have a Patreon that will allow you access to some online training that I provide for some of my distance students and possibly for you too, so also check that out. Be sure to rate, comment, like, subscribe, click the bell. You guys know the drill. It's YouTube. I can't survive without you guys clicking on like 400 things, so do it. Until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.